In this video, I want to talk about uh, other uses of shadow prices and also about something called reduced cost. So again, we are analyzing the second part of the sensitivity analysis report with uh, information about constraints and the shadow prices. And we are considering the following question. Remember, we had uh, two products in our product mix uh, problem where we were planning how many aqua spa and hydrolux hot tubs to produce in order to maximize profit subject to uh, some resource constraints. Now, suppose uh, someone comes to us with uh, a third possible product uh, uh, called Typhoon Lagunet, a new hot tub that we could produce. And they tell us, uh, we estimate the profit contribution will be $320 per Typhoon Lagoon. And, uh, and we also estimate that the resource uh, requirements will be one pump, eight labor hours, and 13 feet of tubing. So, uh, first of all, consider this. This is like uh, another product for this product mix. So we could actually define a third decision variable, some X3, and we could add it here, right? Like a third column in this in this model. We could say uh, there will be plus 320X3. There will be plus X3 here in the pumps because every Typhoon Lagoon consumes one pump. There will be eight uh, labor hours eight times x3 in the labor hour constraint and 13, right? Because there's eight here and 13 times x3 in the third constraint feet of tubing, right? Uh, so we could actually create a modified model and solve it and see if this uh, Typhoon Lagoon would be produced or not and how many units of it would be produced. Now, um, there is an interesting thing we can do an interesting analysis using shadow prices that we can do without resolving. And this is especially useful if we have, for say, potentially a lot of uh, possible products we could produce and we're thinking, which one should we introduce from the perspective of profitability? So uh, what I'm going to tell you is the following. Imagine if we were to just produce one Typhoon Lagoon, right? One of those products. What would be the gain, right? Suppose one Typhoon Lagoon is produced. Right, uh, the gain is three hundred twenty dollars of profit. Right, extra profit. Uh, what is the cost? Cost is well, cost is due to shifting resources away from the old products to Typhoon Lagoon. So the typhoon, the, the, the unit of typhoon lagoon that we're just now producing, right? So, so uh, right, what is this cost? Well, if you recall, we know actually the cost of losing uh, resources because we know every one pump less will be $200 of profit less. Every labor hour less will be $16.67 less. And every foot of tubing will be $0 less. And of course, you know, remember that it actually works only in a certain range up to the allowable decrease. And we should actually, again, use only one at a time. However, at the margin, right, so at a, at a small range of changes, we can use those shadow prices, all of them at the same time. So what I'm trying to say is that we can actually calculate the net gain from a Typhoon Lagoon, right? The net gain... Net gain from uh, one unit of the new product will be equal to the uh, right unit profit, right, 320 minus cost of resources. And this cost of resources will be one pump times shadow price one, right? So let's put it maybe in parentheses plus eight uh, labor hours times shadow price number two, and plus uh, 13 feet of tubing times shadow price three, right? So we can actually calculate it as 320 minus, and then we say one times 200 plus eight times 16.67 plus um, 13 times zero, right? So if we do the calculation here, it will be 320 minus, this is $200, and this is another 
133. So in total, it will be 333.33. So the net gain will be minus 13.33, right? It's, it's a, a negative gain, meaning that actually the effect will be that we will lose more than we will gain, right? So what does this tell us? What is the uh, usefulness of this? Well, the usefulness of this is that we have just determined that it is not profitable to produce a typhoon like one because the gain will be $320, but taking resources from Aquaspa and Hydrolux will cost us a loss of profit of $333, right? So the net effect will be actually uh, a loss in profit. And therefore, we know if we were to add a third product here and resolve this third product, a Typhoon Lagoon, with the parameters as defined in this in this uh, text, right? We would not be producing. So the optimal solution would be still 122, 78, and then the third product variable optimal value would be zero. So if you want to be convinced, uh, I formulated here a model with those three decision variables. So if you recall, we had Aquaspa and Hydrolaxis, and now I added a third decision variable for Typhoon Lagoons uh, with the parameters, as we said, $320 of profit per unit, one pump, eight labor hours, and 16, sorry, this should be 13 feet of tubing used. And notice that I, I, I updated this model such that the total profit and all these functions take into account the three decision variables and three parameters each, right? So now if I go to the solver, and everything is entered here already, right? The, the same constraints, except that there's now three decision variables, right? So decide all those three, maximize the profit, which is in this function, and subject to the three constraints, which are now updated with the new decision variable. I click solve, and notice what happens. Right, solver found an optimal solution. All constraints, the optimality conditions are satisfied, and we still have the same solution, 12278, with the third decision variable zero. And what I want you to now see is we will go to the sensitivity report. I'm going to generate the sensitivity report, and I want you to see what we see here now. Now, this sensitivity report is slightly different than we had before because now we have three decision variables, right? So the interesting thing is the, the constraints are the same as before, the shadow prices are the same as before, and even all the numbers here happen to be the same as before. However, in the variables, we see now the third decision variable. We, of course, have allowable increase and decrease for this objective coefficient, but the interesting thing is the reduced cost. And uh, notice the value that we have here. We, it, it, this is actually the net marginal value that we just computed a moment ago, right? We computed, we said that if we were to produce the Typhoon Lagoon, we would gain $320, but we would lose more, we would lose $333 due to shifting resources away from Aquaspas and Hydroluxes. And actually this net gain, which is negative in this case, is shown as a reduced cost. So you have here the meaning of reduced cost. The reduced cost tells you why this decision variable is zero at the optimal solution. Why the solver decided not to produce uh, typhoon lagoons? Well, it decided this because if we were, if it were to produce them, it would be losing thirteen dollars thirty-three cents for every typhoon lagoon that it produced. Right? Another interpretation of this is that if we were, if we really wanted to have this typhoon lagoon product produced we would have to increase, for example, the per unit profit by at least $13.33 in order to make this product relatively profitable to produce. So you see, reduced costs are zero always when the decision variables are not set to their limits, in this case, lower limits zero. And uh, reduced cost has a meaning when a decision variable is at a limit, in general, at a lower limit or an upper limit for this decision variable. Now, we don't have upper limits here, right? We don't have maximum typhoon lagoons we can produce, but we have a lower limit of zero, and the reduced cost minus 1333 tells us why it is zero, right? So a, a reduced cost is kind of a negation of a trigger uh, um, price change, right? Uh, 
for, for the objective coefficient. If this objective coefficient for Typhoon Lagoons improved by more than 13.33, the product would become uh, profitable.